we are going to look at the life of somebody called Robert Robert More McChain. That's the person we'll be looking at. His life and things which we can learn from him in regard to holiness or sanctification. Before I come there, I just want to maybe give some introduction. The church, you know, is composed, sometimes we say the church militant, which means us here who are still fighting and, and still have to struggle and to be in war with both seeing the world and sometimes even the church face persecution here on earth. But they are, then there's that part of church that have triumphed. They are in glory with God and reigning now. You see, see them singing in Revelation chapter 5. They sang a new song which they never sang before. They were looking forward to him. But when they look backward now, they say, Worthy is the lamb who was laid. They didn't see him actually slain, but they can now look. And then they see the lamb was slain. And he's worthy to open the scroll and to break the seal and to look therein. That's the church that is exalted now. And we are part of that. God willing, someday we also will be part of church triumph, either at his coming or if he's pleased to call us home. Having said that, can we turn to, I don't just want to go and say, oh, pastor, you just started, we are reading history of a mere human being like us. So let us go to scripture just to build something. First Timothy 4. First Timothy chapter 4, I'll read verse 16. It's the last verse. Take heed unto thyself and the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear. Apostle Paul writing to Timothy, he was a pastor at Ephesus. It, during the very hard times, there were people who were undermining the gospel. And so he wrote. But can you see there, I say, he reminded him as a pastor to take heed of himself. He was a pastor. The one we are going to look at his life was also a pastor. Take heed of yourself. So primarily, he's telling this pastor, you are a Christian before anything else. And so you must take care of your life. The way you live, you must take care of your life. And then the teachings of the doctrines. And this is also very important. That's why we are doing the doctrine of I'll define it a bit. Sanctification, it has been defined. I'll try to define it again. That's why we are doing it. Our faith does not hang in the air. We can't practice faith in the air. Doctrines matters. Because God is holy, be ye holy. Our brother was laboring on that. Our faith hangs on doctrines. So he say, take heed of yourself. And if you do this, continue in them. Something you need to do. Continue, keep on doing it. And by doing so, you save both yourself and those who hear you. So you can see the subject that we are dealing with is very important to us. Sometimes lack of assurance comes, in our, not always, sometimes, when we are not progressing 
in sanctification. A big word, sanctification, but very simple. It means that, it only means, I want the simplest way possible, but when the Lord saved us, he changed us, and he's still changing us, and then the end is glory. That changing, that is making us be more and more like the Lord Jesus Christ in all aspects of our lives. It goes on until we see our beloved Lord and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Then we shall be perfect. So, Machine's Life and Times, I don't want to give read more, but let me just read for some few parts and then I'll talk in regard to our own changing in this present life. Robert Murray McChain, 1813 to 1843, was the minister of St. Peter Church, Dundee, in 1836 to 1843. He was a godly evangelical pastor and evangelist with a great love for the soul. What a description if somebody was to summarize our lives. You know, like when you read the book of Acts, chapter 5, I think verse 42, the summary is given of the apostle and say, from house to house and daily, they never cease to preach Jesus. If we are somebody to write our biography as we leave this world, what will they say? Can we be described that we are godly? Also, Paul will write to Timothy, will tell him, godliness with contentment is of great gain. Godliness. And he is called, he was a godly evangelical pastor. But also he was evangelist with great love for soul. He loved souls. He wanted to see souls coming to the Lord Jesus Christ and believing in him. Can that does describe you or myself? I was telling them yesterday and I was telling you, one of the way we progress in sanctification is also fighting. And it's also by loving soul and reaching out to other people. We don't not only progress in sanctification, by defending, by defending and running away, but also one of the ways that we defend and we grow in sanctification is progressing. And that is by loving souls. You know, people come to our church every Sunday. They sit with us. Do we talk to them about the glorious gospel? Are we concerned with their state? When we become concerned with the state of other people, the Lord uses that also to help us grow in holiness. If you read Ephesians, put on the whole armor of God, you know, pastor was dealing today with congregation. It dealt with individual. Yes, that scripture applied to, uh, apply to us individually, but also cooperatively as a church. One of the, those weapons are to defend, but other weapons are to attack. Like carrying the gospel with our feet ready with the gospel of peace. We attack. We go there and we attack by proclamation of God's word. And by doing so, the Lord uses that to help us progress in our sanctification. And so no wonder he was godly, but also he loved souls which is lacking in our modern society. In football, 
you don't only defend, but also you attack. You, you defend by attacking. If you are just there kicking the ball this side and this side and this side, you will score on your own goal. You need also to attack. And as you attack, you defend. Dear friends, we must love souls. I don't know how to put it. But if we are to progress, the Lord saved us when we were dead in our sins and trespasses. And we desire to live for him and grow in sanctification. So that's how he's described. I'm just going to jump here and there. If you want more, you can, you can Google and read about it. Or there's that book also. There's a book that is full of his journal. And we can check the life of Robert Murray McChain. His early years, Robert McShane was born in Enderberg in May 1813. By the way, I'll tell you that you know, he did not live long. He only lived 29 years. And we are, we are studying him. We are looking at his life as a person who lived a full life for God. Some of us, we, we are past 50 now. But when we look back, he still outmatch us. May the Lord give us grace. Some of you are almost there. Maybe you are 25, 26. Yeah. So it doesn't mean that you have to live long in order to do great things for God. It can even be short. Maybe you are saved yesterday as, or today as you are hearing the preaching. That's enough for you to begin from there. And from there, you can bring glory to God. So, that's when he was born. The youngest child in a family of five. His father was a prosperous lawyer and a man of social importance. Their spacious home with a garden commanded a glorious view across the shores of Fife. This is in Scotland. That's where he spent his life and his youth. So you can see he's coming from a family that is well-to-do. A family that look respectable. Then, I wanted to see something about him after... Okay, I don't want to talk about education. I want to do, deal with his conversion a little bit. But he was the, the subject of his brother's fervent prayer. I think I have jumped a little bit a lot. I wanted to talk about some of things, how he lived. When he was in high school, he say he, be, he became at this time an eager participant in a city fashionable entertainment. So you can see before salvation, those were the things he liked. Fashionable entertainment and uh, entertainments and scene of gaiety, card playing, dancing, music occupy his leisure hours. Those were the things he was living for before salvation. He was living for the world before salvation. He was, in other words, dead in sin and trespasses, just as others were. Whether you come from an influential family, that does not make you a Christian. Whether you come from a poor family or a rich family, does not make you saved. And so he was given to the pleasures of this world. And I'll remember, there's a verse which I will want us to read shortly after doing this. But he was a subject of his elder brother's fervent prayer. So you can see his brother was born again, was saved, and was praying for him. And the early death of his brother in 1831 was a stroke which was used to awaken Roberts from sleep of nature. 
It was the first overwhelming blow to my worldliness. He began to be serious and sit under an evangelical ministry in the winter of 1831. Following his desire to enter ministry, he entered the Divinity Hall of University under the leadership of men like Kama Klamas, Welsh, and there was a new star of spiritual life in the college at this time. Indeed, it proved to be a new star in the life of the Church of Scotland. So we can see the Lord used the prayer of his brother. His brother was a prayerful man, but then the death of his brother awakened him from wildness. I want some, one of you to stand and read to us that famous verse, chapter, because we are looking at if, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. So, Mungu alitumia kifo, kifo ya ndugu, ndugu yake, kumuamusha, kumuamusha kutoka katika roho ilio kufa kwa dhambi na mauti. If you get it, stand and read for us from verse 9. Any one of you here, brother? First Corinthians 6, 9. Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality. Nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you are washed, you are sanctified, you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and Amen. by the Spirit of our God. Amen. So the Paul is writing to Corinthians. We are looking at the life of Robert. McChain. And we are seeing a man that the Lord changed, like the Corinthians. Before salvation, the, those sins that have been mentioned, you remember our brother mentioned them, the, those people are barred from heaven. The people who live that lifestyle. The people that live that the life, the least that has been mentioned, they are barred from heaven. Heaven is not their place. And he said, don't be deceived. If that's the lifestyle you are living, no heaven. And he tells the Corinthians, some of you are like that. And you see there, you see the change that comes at salvation and that change that needs to grow until we see the Savior. Some of you are like that, but you are washed. You are washed. Washed. You are sanctified. That sanctification, that is happened once when you are saved. Taken from the world, now you belong to God. That's not the life you are living now. You are no longer living that lifestyle that you were living before. You have been removed from such lifestyle. And now you have been planted into this uh, lifestyle. And brethren, I must also be gentle. There are people who can be struggling with some of the sin that has been mentioned here. But they are not happy. A true believer is not happy. If you are there and you are groaning, and you are saying, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, please. Again, you are a believer. I'll be tender to you. And the Lord Jesus will not break you. But if you are living that life, and you come out happy, and you say, ha, 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 even no one will discover. Even my pastor cannot see. <laughs> you will not inherit the kingdom of God. You are not even saved. You need Christ. You need Christ. So I'm so tender to believers because I have sometimes I have sometimes I have young people who struggle with pornography. And they cry again. Oh my Lord. Again I'm there. Tell them no. Keep on fighting. Keep on killing. Keep on killing. Pastor was saying there, be persistent. Don't give up. And in a few minutes or some months, they say pastor is gone. Sometimes it's because of lack of growth. You are the same. So when temptation comes, find you the same, same man. You were last year. You are the same. 
So when it come, <laughs> when it come, you are the same. But in the, when you grow in grace, keep on looking to the Lord. When it comes, now you put your feet down, isn't it? You wrestle. You wrestle. And they say, hey, pastor, it's gone. So, so um, I want to be tender. He's talking people who are living such life. They not see the kingdom of God. And pastor said it, and please, I want to repeat it here. No kingdom of God for you. No heaven for you. If that's the lifestyle you are living, no heaven for you. But if you are there struggling, he says, a broken reed, he shall not break. He shall not break. He shall not break. Go to your pastor. Go to brethren. Tell them I'm struggling. Please help. Let us pray together. And read the Bible. The Lord is going to help you grow. So we are talking of the change that the Lord is giving us. Dear friends, the Lord changed us when he resurrected us from our sin. But the Lord is still changing us. He's still changing us. He's still working in us. He's still helping us. As he pursued those means that were mentioned to us, the Lord is helping us to grow, to grow. And dear friends, soon he'll come and we shall be in glory and the struggle shall be gone. So we want to look at some of the things, especially that are mentioned in his diary. He wrote this. Truly there was nothing in me that should have induced him to choose me. That's God. There was nothing good in me that would, would have commended me to him. When he looked back, I was but as other brand, brands upon whom the fire is already kindled. We shall burn forevermore. You know, this heart of remembering that God elected him, that God saved him by grace, he was so conscious of that. Please, now I'm about to have a to see me If we are not progressing on that field, may we begin to progress now. <laughs> you can see he saw his unworthiness and so salvation to him was so precious and Christ was so precious to him because there was nothing good in him. He was heading to hell. And only if we can be looking back and seeing where the Lord has removed us and seeing how we were in a slippery place held, he, heading to heaven, to hell, and how the condemnation and how the law of God was condemning us, the soul that sinned shall surely die. And we are on our way to destruction. And the Lord snatch us. That ought to give us a vigor to live for our God and pursue him. Maybe, my friends, you are not like this man. There was something good in you. But he said there was nothing good in him. And indeed, there's nothing good in us at all. That's the beginning of running towards holiness. We are grateful to God. I read some years back, I read Baxter on the sin of believers. He said this, when a believer sin, he sin against a close relation. <coughs> if you wrong somebody outside, it's bad. But if you wrong your own father and mother, that's too close and God has adopted us into his family we would not deserve. When we wrong them, it's so close. We're so close. And so we must not take sin lightly. And also he say, we sin again a special grace. Other people just know common grace. But you, the Lord has opened your eyes to his special grace. You are the son of his love. 
the daughter of Isaac, when I use the word son, it's even enough. Because it means both male and female. So, he said the Lord kindled. He was, he was he, in his, was in his way, the fire was already kindled. He was to burn forever and ever. But God came to him in mercy and in grace. He's rich in grace and mercy. And Mark Chain, who was on that road, was saved. If you are here, you have not been believing, you have not trusted the Lord, you can be saved. You can be saved. You can be made anew. Only look up to him. So, I uh, repeat, sometimes, as we learn from him, progressive sanctification, we ask. We don't grow because we don't remember who we were. Before the Lord grabbed us. But if you remember who you are, you will think deeply how to grow in progressing sanctification or how to be growing, how to be becoming more and more like the Lord Jesus Christ. And then another thing which he wrote awfully important question that means the most important question. You know, the word, English words keep on changing. Now when you say something is awful, it means very bad. Yeah? <laughs> but then he did mean that. So, yeah. so one of the question, the important question that he asked himself that I also want to if by grace of God to squeeze to you is this. Am I redeeming the time? That's the question he asked himself. No wonder he was a godly man who described. He said, am I redeeming the time? You see, our brethren were telling you how it is something we have to strive towards. And I'm repeating to, to you here. And I want to come closer. Are you redeeming time? Or are we wasting time? Are we making use, good use of time that God has given to us? Ephesians Five, Ephesians five, verse sixteen and seventeen. Talking about Christian, how they should walk, but he tells them this: redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. You see? Redeeming time. Why? The days are evil. The days that we live in, even then, they are evil. And so time is of great importance. And McChain is saying, I need to redeem time. Am I redeeming time? Or am I just using time anyhow? And you see this by, by redeeming time, you become wise. If we are not de redeeming time, then we are unwise. So the people that redeem their time and use their time, so, time well, they are wise. They are understanding what the will of the Lord is. They desire to know what the will of God is. And dear friend, this is how we are to be changed. By redeeming time. Do you redeem time?
How do you use your time? How do you spend your time? And then you, you want to say, oh, I'm not progressing in holiness. And you are not doing anything profitable, useful, meditating upon the word of God, saying, Lord, can you today help me to grow? I was with a brother. I visited a brother some years back. I will not mention him. Somebody you know. I visited him some years back and he was praying and he said, Lord, may you not allow us today to jump into sin with open eyes as we begin our days. May you help us that we will not jump into sin with our eyes open. And we need to be redeeming time. I don't have, how much should I stress this? With social media. With a TikTok, with the television, with movies, with World Cup. Yeah, you know you can watch World Cup and fail even to pray. <laughs> Are you redeeming time? That's something which Pastor Conrad, Pastor quoted him, taught me sometimes ago. He taught me how to schedule a post on Facebook. So somebody may think, oh, you are posted, but that thing was written somewhere, eh, sometimes later. So you may be in a plane and you are post. Just go there. You may be doing something, something else, and whereas the post can go there. Are we redeeming time? I'm not, say, I'm not going to say this in order to boast to you. I don't have anything to boast. But I want to do this as illustration. I recently went to America and I had a time with young people. I was so amazed. The group that I visited, they are from Slavic. That means the Russia, Russia, Belarus, uh, Ukraine, those people who come from those areas there. I was there, and you know, they meet every week, twice. Middle of the week, they have youth meeting. And they cook the way we used to do with Gideri when we were young. Eh? They have those meetings. And so we were talking after preaching. And you know what they say? They say, you know, we sometimes fast. And ask, eh? what are the some things we fast? They say, sometimes we fast Instagram, Facebook. All those social media, we don't post even for three months. So we focus ourselves into seeking God. And I say, hey, Lord have mercy. <laughs> Lord have mercy. We must be redeeming time. The days are evil. The days are evil. And we need to spend our time in things that promote our holiness. Things that make us more and more like the Lord Jesus Christ. Dear friends, the, Lord, the world has influenced the church today and the people are wasting time. They are not using time well in order to become more and more like Christ. What will you tell the Lord? That we spend our time in gossip or in lying? We need to spend time. Even if you are taken to a place where things are not good. When I went to Meru, I, was, I went to Meru. And our church in Miadene, we didn't have meetings. We have only meetings those days on Sunday. People are not coming during the weekdays. Then I say, what will I be doing in Meru? From Monday, I wait until Sunday. Okay, I'll read the Bible and preach and go. And then wait for the meeting. Then I said, no, I came back to Nairobi. I bought a megaphone. 
and we started started preaching three times a day. Three times a day. Say no, we must be occupied. So I'll go to the market. If I'm preaching today that the death of Jesus Christ was on our behalf, that's what I'll do. The next day, the death of the Lord Jesus was to remove the anger of God. That's what I do the following. The following, and then we repeat again and again and again going to me again. Dear friends, there is no shortcut in using our time well. No shortcut. You people who go to church late, you always come late. You are not redeeming time. Pastor, I may prepare Sunday Bible study. You say, me, I go, and you divide the worship. You say, I go to main service. There's no men's, everything is main. Whether it's a Bible study. <laughs> Everything in church on Sunday is main, whether Bible study, whether children, whether it is prayer meeting, whether it is preaching, everything is main. Hey. You say, me, I just go to main. Please, there's, everything is main. We must be redeeming time and going, growing in holiness. Growing in holiness. He say, ask himself that question. Am I redeeming time? I want to, to rush to another thing. Sabbath. Yeah, Sunday. Sabbath. Rose early to seek God. And found him whom my soul loveth. Who will not rise early to miss such a company? He asked. Even before going to church. Because Sunday is the Lord's day. He rose early in the morning to seek God in prayer. How many people pray even before coming to service on Sunday? No wonder we are not progressing. We are not progressing. Seek God. And he found him. And he said his soul loved him. And Ali, it is good to have such a company. Dear friend, you, look, you will grow, you will grow. Such a person who is deliberate and practical like this, you will grow in holiness. You will grow, you will progress. Yesterday I was telling them, a friend taught me this, not my own illustration, he told me this. In progressive sanctification, or the changing that we are receiving, it is like killing an elephant, but you don't use a bullet. You use a pen knife. So you keep on, 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 you keep on. One day the giant. That's it. That's it. And so that's why he was waking up early to seek the Lord. You remember that song we sing? Early, let us seek thy favor. Early, let us do thy will. We sing it and we slept. <laughs> How many people pray? You know, personally, I stop boasting. I cannot boast in pre my preaching. Some years back, I was taken to Magari Valley to go and preach. And the church had offices this side. So on Sunday, Saturday night, there's a lady who came to that church and she prayed for service. She prayed even for announcement. You know, announcement, you can make a mistake. You can be so harsh. You can start to stand to make an announcement. Yeah. He prayed even for announcement. He prayed the Lord maybe. And then I say, eh, 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 eh. I may go there and say how wonderful I preach. Maybe the Lord is answering prayer of a poor lady who was praying somewhere. Are you praying for the service, for the preachers? Are we praying? Aliomba, alikuwa namuka, ali, anapenda company of God. If you love God, you love his company. Eh? Song of Solomon has got one. We say, oh, this bride, the, I think it's the groom. 
who went to the house to seek the bride. And the, uh, and the bride was asleep, and he was knocking. And he said, hmm. he's conscious. She was conscious. And that's very true that believers are always conscious. He can hear. A true believer is conscious. He can hear. But he knocked the door, and he was still saying, let me sleep. Let me sleep. And then the beloved disappeared. And he came out and he could not find him. He said, where is he? He went to the watchman. I could not find him. Sometimes we cry, where are those beautiful times we used to have with the Lord? Ile muda nilikuwa nikiomba tu hivi. Ile wakati ile nilikuwa nafurahia sana. What has happened? What are those beautiful days that I used to have with the Lord? You are not conscious. We were conscious, but we did not wake to meet with the beloved. Dear friends, he woke early on Sabbath day. How do you regard Sunday, the Lord's day? How do you take the Lord's day? Is it a day of shopping? Long time. I was telling them yesterday, in the college which I went, we were not allowed to wash on Sunday, to iron on Sunday, to go to the library on Sunday. No hanging of clothes along the compound. You were supposed to go to church. And after service, wherever you have gone, you come back, and then you have chapel in the evening. And so the entire day is spent with the Lord. You young people, I can see you here, many of you. Many of you. How do you spend your Sunday? It's a day, by the way, if you check my Facebook, I don't post. I post mostly hymns because people have neglected them. But on my WhatsApp status, <coughs> Sunday. Do you have that day that you leave it the Lord? Or is the day that you go for chama and you meet with your sister and your mother? And your brother and your father, or is the day lost day? <clears throat> he, he respected the Lord's day, and so he woke up early to pray. Okay, let me jump another. Resolve never to lose one moment of time that what we have seen. Resolve that I will live so as I, I shall wish I had done when I had come to die. You know, sometimes people wish, uh, I wish, I wish I knew I could have done this. But he's saying, since the Lord has saved me, I want to live a life that, yes, really this is the life I'm living and is worth as I go to the Lord Jesus Christ. I have lived a life that is worthy of his calling. It is like Apostle Paul saying, he looked back. He say, I fought the good fight. I finished the race. He looked his present situation. I am now being offered like a, a drink offering. I'm suffering now, being offered like a drink offering. The time of my departure, he called it a departure. It's moving from one place to another has come. And then he looked forward and he say, the crown of righteousness with God the judge shall give. Now await me, not only me, but even them that love his appearing. He wanted to live a life that is fully lived unto the Lord Jesus Christ. And dear friends, we must be deliberate. We must be deliberate that we'll, with all our energy, by his help, we want to live the glory and honor of God. He said he wants to live with all his might while he still do, do live, giving all to the Lord. Let me then show you something. So ended his preparation, discipline both of heart and mind. So he used to prepare, discipline, both his mind, his heart and his mind, his soul. 
was prepared for the work, the awesome work of the ministry by much prayer, much study of the word of God, inward trials by experience of death, of corruption in his own heart, and by discovery of the savior fullness of grace. So you can see that, that was his life. It was a life that was in prayer, <coughs> taking a long time to pray. Dear friend, what happened to us when we come into the form faith in terms of prayer? I still wonder why, what has happened to us. There are people who are really very busy. They used to pray when they were in charismatic. Maybe a wrong way, but now you have got right way. Why are you praying? Because you have become reformed. <laughs> Look, these are reformed people that were spending much time in prayer. And dear friends, many things are disturbing us today. Many people are disturbed today because we lack prayer. We don't pray. I'm talking of individual prayers or your private prayers, but also corporate prayers, where we come on a Sunday and pray together. Or Wednesday, like us, we have Wednesday on prayer. I don't know when you have, but you know, a church needs to have a day of prayer. A day where you go there, people go to pray. Those prayer meetings are not attended by many. Maybe in your churches, not where I come from. Maybe in your churches, prayer meeting is packed like this. And this one is out of subject. In Nairobi, I must always tell people when we are in Lord's, when we have public prayers, that there are two things which destroy prayer, public prayer. Long prayers and long poses. Can you imagine if you are 100 people? And we are all supposed to pray. We want even the young people who are saved to pray. And you pray for 10 minutes. When will others pray? <laughs> so even in our churches, when you go, this public prayer, we want to hear the children. We want to hear the children also pick. We want to hear the others who are recently converted Pick and also pray. We want to hear that person pray. We want to hear that person pray. We want to hear that person pray. And sometimes long gaps. You say, let us pray. And when you say amen, everybody. <laughs> so we should be rushing. This one pick and the other one and the other one. So he dedicated his life to prayer. And then to study of the word of God. Dear friends, this is the word of God, the Bible. There are 66 books. Let me give you an example of this. When I went to Bible college, we were taught a, a subject called principle of study, how to study. And the lady that was teaching that subject asked us in the library, what do you see? And we looked at the library, it was full of books. And said, books! Again, books! And told us, you see those books? All those books, they are not inspired. They are helpful, but they are non-inspired book, books. Brethren, we need to read books, even of those who have gone before us. But study of this is the primary. Pastor Tony and Pastor Naftali has really labored on the usage of the Bible to help us grow. <coughs> Let me give you my bad example. There were some years back, I was in Mali. I read books. I used to do summaries of books, and I sent them. And then when I have summarized a book, I sent, and then they sent me another book. So I wanted to build a library. So I read books. I read books. And my wife saw this man is getting lost in books. They are good books, but he's getting lost. Then he talked to my friend. And my friend came and looked my Bible. I said, your Bible is so clean, Pastor. It seems you are not reading Bible. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, yes, I have been studying these good books. <laughs> <laughs> and that year, I put all books 
in Carton, all of them. And I remain with my Bible and prayer. Don't neglect this book at the expense of any. I'm not saying that you should not read other books. Even me, I, I contributed a little chapter in a book. So I'm not saying that you should not read. You should read but other books, but the Bible primarily we need to read the Bible. Memorize it. Meditate on it. Meditate. You know, meditation is thinking over and over again. Meditation is not yoga. It's not you sit there and you see yourself. <laughs> uh -uh. You know, it's not yoga. You know, people think that meditation is very hard because they think in terms of yoga. It's not yoga. Meditation is reflecting. It is a cow, like a cow eating grass and later on chewing cud. Slowly, slowly, they become part of you. So you think over and over and over again from the word of God. You can even walk around as you meditate on the word of God. Or there may someone which was preached on Sunday. Even on, when you, you, you pray over the week, people can even know which someone was preached. People can know. Because you have pondered, meditated upon it over and over again. Memorize it. Ask, how can I squeeze this? How can I apply this in my own life? Also, in what trials, sometimes the Lord allow us to go through difficulties. And also, we know our own corruption. He was conscious of his own corruption. He knew his own corruption and trial. And he wanted to discover the fullness of the Lord's grace. Oh, how it's sweet to trust in Jesus. We sing those songs. How the name of Jesus sound, sweet sound in a believer's ears. There's a name I love to hear, love to sing. It's what sound like music in my ear. Jesus, the name that charm our fears, that beat our sorrow cease. It is music in sinners' ear. It is life and joy and peace. Oh, how we need to sit with the Savior until we become the reflection of the Savior. This is what will help us to grow, to become more and more like our Savior. Yeah. Can you see it's a work, isn't it? It does, it does not just become this one just to mention so you go study. Study Keswick view. Keswick view of salvation. It was a wrong one. Let go, let come. It will not go. Not go and come. You are it's not go. Let go and let come. Uh -huh. You don't let. You run after. You pursue, you fight, you follow. I want to finish soon with a hymn. Look at some of the, his quotation. Your own soul is your first and greatest care. Your own soul is your first and greatest care. Okay. Seek, seek advance of personal holiness. Seek, seek to advance in your personal holiness. There are people who are stagnant. And in a conference like this, you will see them. Do you know where I normally get them? In question and answers time. They always ask, is it good for a Christian to drink? Next year, is it good for a Christian to drink? Are you not advancing? Is this question never settled? You have been so stagnant. Yeah? Yeah? Maybe I'll check those questions tomorrow. Maybe one of them will pop in. They are very common. 
We should be advancing in holiness that some things are also settled. And we say, the Lord, by your grace, these need to be settled by the help of the Holy Spirit. This one, I'm fighting. I'm growing. Sometimes we are stagnant. And do you know when we become stagnant, all the things you, you conquer, they come back. When you stop seeking those means that pastors have said, I don't want to go further into them. You will see anger is back. And you say, oh, this is from my mother. It's not your mother. <laughs> You are not progressing. And you know, Pastor was giving example of those who go to devil and search. They want the easy way. You just said, <laughs> and it's gone. <laughs> you just want to receive. Now my partner, no way. No way. This is a fight. I met a young lady. I met a young lady who was struggling with sexual sin. And so she called me to talk about it. And I, he told me, Pastor, I recently fell in sexual temptations. What make it so bad for me is that I was just from deliverance class after finish, finishing six months. And then from six months, then I just come out and fall again. I told her, I'm so sorry. He doesn't need deliverance class. <laughs> Ask her, how are you living? She told me the movies she watched. I said, with those movies, even if you were delivered a million times, <laughs> you will fall again and again and again. You need to fight. And if you are having those bad movies, throw them. Throw them. Be deliberate. Throw them away. Destroy them. And look for elderly friends. Tola, can you look for elderly ladies that can walk with you? That you can tell your struggle and pray together and grow in grace. So some people are offering very easy way of escaping sin. And dear friends, no easy way. The way that the Lord has ordained for us, they are describing the Bible. In the morning you read them. And it's not easy. Let me give you an example. I like giving an example with myself so much so that you also don't lose hope. It happened even to pastors. Prayer is not easy. Many times I wake up and the mistake which I did, I've done the several times of them, is to go and pray early in the morning in my sofa. I place my head like this. <laughs> And I just say, Father, I have come. <laughs> and then I went, what am I doing? <laughs> so it's a struggle. I'm, I'm giving you that to see that the pastor you see here also struggle. And we need to war in order to grow. So I say, tomorrow I'm not sitting for so far. Sorry. That's, eh? If I go today, I say, this demon that is taking, taking me. <laughs> No, I found I'm not a person of, of sofa. And so I found out also that I'm a, not a person of quiet. So I not shout, but I need to pray audibly. Because there are people who can kneel like this and pray until morning without uttering a word, audibly. But there are also people that lack concentration. Mind goes here, here. So you can pray. Don't shout to your neighbors. But in a normal voice, Oh, Father, we come before you, seeking you. Oh, you are our king. Oh, you are our master. Oh, you are our God. Oh, please remember me today. And those help. So it's a war. And it's a war that also you need to learn. Let me end with a hymn. There are several things which I could have said, but... Take care of your head.
seek advance of your personal holiness as a church and also as an individual. Where in the church do you find the Lord sometimes reveal, reveal us well? Kitchen. Kitchen. Kitchen is where people fight. <laughs> I thought that it's only in Kenya, but it's all over kitchen. You, if you are always quarreling with your fellow sisters in kitchen, tell the Lord, help me to advance in this area. <laughs> if you find yourself coming out and gossiping, help, ask the Lord to help you to grow in that area. So we have talked about pre his prayer life. He was a prayerful person. And the less so, can we have a hymn here? I'll read for you and then we end. Tomorrow, hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> they say you write in a box. <laughs> Not today. <laughs> Not today. Tomorrow, write it. 789. This song was written by him. Those of you who know it, know it. Let me try if I can sing one line or two. When this passing world is done, when has sung the radiant sun, when I stand with Christ on high, looking all of his story, then, Lord, shall I fully know, not till then, how much I owe. You see, you see how he knew that this world is passing. When we know that we are in a passing world, that will cause us to pursue holiness. Dear friend, this is not home. This passing world, we must be like Abraham, the rest who are looking for a city which builder and architect is none than other than God. And then he said, chosen not for good in me, see, that's what I said, waken up from the wrath to flee, hidden in the Savior's side by the Spirit sanctified, you see, God the Holy Spirit working in him, teach me, Lord, on earth to show by my love how much I owe, teach me. Teach me, Lord, by my life. And you young people and elderly people who are here, may we ask the Lord, teach me, me, particularly me, with this life of mine, to show how much I owe. In this life. Are you asking the Lord to do that? Or you are just... You are just posting. Soli fideye, soli deyo gloria. You know, people think if you write those things, you are progressing. You are not progressing. You can even say them all in Latin or Greek. Soli fideye, soli deyo gloria. Why would you want to scare? <laughs> Why can you just say glory to glory of God alone? Eh? Sometimes I, I read your post on Facebook and I want to run away. <laughs> Soli Deo Gloria. Or you are only writing to people who are from your background. Or you want to give people assignment to go and check. We must be progressing knowing how God has loved us and knowing how much we owe the Lord Jesus Christ and our God. And then he will say, when I stand before the throne dressed in a beauty not my own, that one also ought to help us to live a life that is pleasing to God. Know that God demands a righteousness which is like his. And none of us have that righteousness. We lack that righteousness. But God in his infinite mercy and grace has provided that righteousness in Christ and given to us. 
Should we now just live carelessly? Mungu ametupatia ile haki yake ambayo iko kwa maana yake. And then look what he's longing for. When I see thee as thou art, love thee with unseeing heart. A true believer is striving. There's a day, Lord, that I love you with no sin in me. My heart will no longer sin. Oh, now, then shall I fully know how much I owe. When the praise of heaven are here, loud as thunder to the ear, loud as many waters noise, sweet as harp, melodious voice, then, Lord, shall I fully know. Not till then how much I owe. Look how he's longing for heaven. Look how he's not satisfied with his own progressive or holiness. And you, you are satisfied. You compare yourself with the Pastor Michael. You have passed with flying colors. But the standard is not me. It's God's righteousness. Let us pursue holiness. I want us to end there. Sorry. No question. Did you ask the, any question on the other side? Oh, if you didn't, I was sorry. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. But let us end there. Please let us fight. It's not easy, but God is giving us grace. And he's with us, isn't it? Let us, our eyes be fixed upon Christ. He will help us. He will make us holy. Even if you are struggling, don't give up. Don't give up. If you come to me privately, I'll tell you many things that I have struggled with in life. And the Lord, by grace, even I look back and I say, how did I conquer that? Uh -uh. Let me give you an example. There was a time I was sick. I was sick. I fainted in a Mali. I preached for five years without going for a holiday. And so one day I just fainted. And then I was, I was given bad medi medication. And I tell you, my mind could not think well. When I sleep like this, I dream. From the time I start sleeping, I dream until tomorrow. You know? <laughs> This dream after this dream after this dream after this dream. After this dream. <laughs> and then I said, Will ever this thing go out? I decided to go for rest in Mombasa. Started praying like, like Daniel. In the morning, I'll go to this church building, just pray. Initially, I was having now anxiety because you want to get quick, healed quickly. So I said, no more. The Lord gave me grace. So I just pray. I go lunchtime. I pray. I go lunchtime. I pray. Those people saw me in the church and they say, hey, you have been coming here and praying every day. Can you preach to us one, one of the day? <laughs> they had lunch hour. So when I preach, they, they discover I'm a pastor. But the Lord healed me. I can't say how. By and by, I cannot tell how, but by and by, these things, and then I look back and I say, am I the one? Am I the one that's sleeping without many, many dreams? So dear friends, sometimes we need to fight and we don't need to give up. Sometimes it's very hard. Sometimes our own health causes us problems. But let us not give up. Please let us just hope in God. Sindio. Lord, if this is a thorn in flesh, a thorn in my flesh, so be it. Give me grace to live with it. Dear friends, don't give up. In any scene you are fighting, don't give up. And go to your pastor. A good pastor will not tell you, go away. Go away. Go to your pastor, no matter what it is. Go. I wish we were like Wazungu. Wazungu wanakuambia. Wanakuja tu wanakuambia, pastor, I'm struggling with this. Please be open. See, heri uliye na uponi. Kuliko kufa kama mwanaume. Let us pray.